Well, good morning to my Good Shepherd family and a warm happy Father's Day. Welcome to all of you fathers out there. Uh, my name is Daniel Welch. I am the Student Ministries Director. Um, I'm going to be bringing you your announcements this morning. And the first of our announcements is if you're watching this um, as it's premiering, if you're watching this video on YouTube as it's premiering, um, we're actually doing our in-person services now. Um, coming up next week, we're going to have another one, and our office is going to be sending out an email so that we can all RSVP for that, so that we can keep track and make sure that we're going to be having enough room to accommodate for everyone who wants to come to our in-person services. Um, the next announcement is that as we've been moving through the season of the COVID-19, um, things have been looking a little different this year. And that includes things like school and graduation. So we have a small video clip to uh, congratulate and honor our graduating students this year. So we're going to go ahead and roll that now. Hey, Good Shepherd. Uh, Daniel Welch here. Um, so we know that this year a lot of things have looked really different. Um, a lot of us have had to change our routines or make sacrifices here and there. And one thing that um, has, you know, touched me, um, you know, working with our youth and everything is the fact that a lot of our graduating students this year didn't really get a chance to um, walk or celebrate graduation in that traditional type of way. And so we just want to make sure that you know, to our graduating students, you guys know that you are important and seen and loved and we are very proud of you. So we just wanted to take a moment to honor you and celebrate you guys. So I'm gonna take a moment to pray over you real quick and then we'll have a quick moment to uh, celebrate and honor you guys. Uh, Father God, thank you so much for um, the fact that you have helped each and every one of these students through so much through years of dedication and hard work and long nights through studying and tests to bring them to graduation. Now I know it looks different this year God but we are still so grateful that you brought them to this place and to this point in their lives and Lord I just trust you knowing that though this year looked different the future is so bright and the best is still yet to come. Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit would just rest upon these graduates and that they would be filled with peace and joy and be able to continue walking forward in their faith with you and in their lives, that they would be able to continue on to even greater things. And it's in your holy and gracious name we pray. Amen. All right, graduates. So again, we love you and congratulations. All right, so congratulations again to our Good Shepherd graduates. Uh, next up is coming up on the 26th and the 27th, we're going to be doing a neighborhood prayer walk and food drive where we're going to be kind of prayer walking our surrounding community and area and doing a food drive as well. So 
The details for that are in our weekly announcements or the weekly email that's sent out. So go ahead and check that out. And if you'd like to come and help us out with that, go ahead and RSVP by emailing me at daniel at lcgs.net. Um, next, our very own Jonathan Hamrick has also uh, released a song. Uh, it's up on Spotify and iTunes and all the places you can uh, find it. So go ahead and search his name and you will be able to find his new song that he's been working on uh, during the, uh, the uh, lockdown. And next, we have our VBS video. So for all the kids who are watching, come on up to the screen and we're going to get some of those wiggles out as we play this video. All right. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Good morning, Good Shepherd, or good evening if you're watching us on Facebook. Uh, it's such an honor to be worshiping our Father, our good Father this morning. Uh, you know, when we remember our fathers here on earth, here on Father's Day, it's also an opportunity to give thanks for our Heavenly Father, who is so good, who is so loving, who cares for us, who's proven himself faithful time and time again. And so as we worship this morning, I want to invite you to just engage fully. Just invite the presence of God into your homes, into your hearts. Would you just worship him this morning? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his hope. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song. 
your name. Jesus, we lift you up. Just take a moment in your hearts. Just remove any distractions, all the cares and worries of the day. Just lay them aside for a moment with Jesus. begin to feel his presence, feel his love pour out on you. Just begin to feel the arms of a good father 
wrap around you, hold you tight, tell you that you're loved, that you're accepted, that you're forgiven. Just rest in his arms. Sit at his feet, listen to his voice. He's good. He wants to just spend time with us this morning. So God, we thank you. We lift you up. We ask that you would speak. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, as always, just want to invite you to reach out to your friends or loved ones, especially on this Father's Day. Uh, and as you do that, I'm going to invite Pastor Trevor to come up, and he has a, a word for the kids and for all of us as well. So come on up, Pastor Trevor. Well, hello. Happy Father's Day. Congrats to you grads and dads. We got a, a Sunday to celebrate our grads and dads today, which is awesome. Kiddos, come on up close to the screen because this message is for you guys today. So one of the Ten Commandments is honor your father. And I can't think of any other gift that you can give that's better than listening to your padre, your father today. So make sure that you're honoring them today, listening to them, doing what they say. Today, you got to be the perfect kid, okay? <laughs> oh, man, that's a great gift that you can give. Another great gift is, here's what I want you to do. I want you, during this sermon, to ask your parents for a little piece of paper or a big piece of paper and get some crayons out and write your father a little note of how thankful you are and how much you love them, okay? Can you do that? Awesome. Well, to my Good Shepherd family who's all gathered around South Bay, why don't we just extend a hand right now? We're used to doing this in our services, but we're just going to extend a hand and bless all of our kids wherever they are and bless the homes there. So extend a hand and let's just pray over them. Dear God, we thank you for the fathers. We bless them. But God, we thank you for the kids. May they grow up to know you, Jesus, and know you in their homes. And so bless them and keep them. Always guide and protect them and grow them up to know you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, kiddos, here's what I want you to do now. Get your, your paper and your crayon, but also go and get your dad right now. If you're able, if he's in the room, give him the sloppiest, juiciest kiss on the cheek that you can, okay? And wish him a happy Father's Day. All right? Let's do that. Well, good morning or evening, where, wherever or whenever you are watching this. I'm glad that you are here with us today. This month, we have been on a journey of prayer. We've been spending the month of June praying for our church, for our cities, for our neighborhoods, and for our homes. That's what we've been doing. And I think God gave us this great gift because this has been one of the craziest months that I can remember in my lifetime. And as a people of God, what do we do when we don't have all the answers? What do we do when it doesn't make sense? What do we do when our lives are falling apart? Well, we come to God in prayer. And I wanted to share with you, because we've been doing these prayer walks, sunrise to sunset, every Wednesday. Our first one was on our church and we had 42 people come and sign up for, for slots. And so we had 42 people walking through our campus, praying over our church and praying for our people. That was awesome being a part of that. The following week, we prayed over our city. Okay. And again, we had the same number, 42 people who signed up, which is fascinating. And I just want to just to show you all the different places that we were praying over our city. I think this is so cool. So I have a slide for you of all those different places so we can look at that now. So check this out. 42 people from sunrise to sunset all over our city on that day. We prayed for 
Torrance City Hall Courthouse, the police department's little company of Mary, Redondo Fire and Police, Royal Wood Nursing Home, West High School, Chapman Elementary School, Carson High School, Manhattan Beach and Fire, Beach Fire and Police, Torrance High School and Downtown Torrance Businesses, UCLA, and the list continues. I think it's so cool that we as a community were out in our city, out in our places to bless and pray over those areas, which was really cool. Then last week, our call of prayer was over blessing our homes. We've been spending a lot of time in our homes recently, and our homes are sacred places where we get to invite Jesus into our homes. And so we had the sacred privilege of just giving God our homes and opening up those homes as places of refuge, places of healing, places that people may come and be loved by Jesus. That was really cool. Well, that brings us to this week. Pastor Scott Hawkins, he preached last week and he said, the home is a place to be launched out of, which is true. Launched out where? Well, into our neighborhoods. So this week, we are encouraging us to go into our neighborhoods and pray walk our neighborhoods. Doubtless, many of you already walk your neighborhoods. You're already spending the time walking around your neighborhoods. And this little, little um, change in the way that we walk is we begin to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us as we're walking, open our eyes to what's going on, and we begin to pray for our neighbors. Okay, That's what we're going to be talking about today, is prayer walking our neighbors. Now, I can't think of a, a more important time that we are beginning this discussion on neighborhoods. Uh, not just that Jesus' Jesus's ministry was um, done mainly in the streets in neighborhoods, right? Think of Zacchaeus. Jesus is just walking along the way. He sees Zacchaeus and he says, I need to come into your house. I need to come into your neighborhood, right? Or how about the man who was paralyzed and Jesus was in a neighborhood, in a home, and they had to drill a hole in the roof and lay, and lay him down or, or um, draw him down so that he could be healed Jesus does a lot of his ministry in the neighborhood. You know, Jesus' greatest act of ministry on the wooden cross for us, giving his life for us, that was an incredible moment in his ministry. But think about this. How about the 30 years that he was a carpenter working with wood in a neighborhood? Sometimes we focus on Jesus and all the incredible acts that he's done, but we forget they happened in normal everyday places with normal everyday people like the people in your own neighborhoods, like people like you and I. And so as we go about prayer walking our neighborhood, we are asking the kingdom of God to come into the normal everyday places that we find ourselves. You know, Jesus said the two greatest commandments are this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus had an extreme importance on loving neighbors. We know this. We know this. And in fact, it's important in this season because of the racial conflicts, the social unrest and problems that we have in our country. And let me speak this clearly. You know what's going to heal our nation? It's not going to be who we elect in the office. It's not going to be who we put in places of leadership. It's going to be normal, everyday people like you and I who begin the work, as Paul put it, the work of reconciliation in our neighborhoods, in our homes. And so that's the type of importance, that's the type of calling that we have is to follow Jesus in the everyday ordinary places, in our workplaces, and amongst our family to begin to heal this country, to begin the work of reconciliation and helping heal the wounds of this country. Now, I'm not saying who we elect is not important. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying they can't heal our country. 
Their job is to manage, not heal. It's our job to bring about healing through Jesus Christ working through us. You know, in, in Luke 9, Jesus sends out his disciples into the neighborhood. And he gives them a mission to do there. And I almost feel like that's what this sermon is. This is a ascending sermon. This is a sermon about, hey, God's put you in your neighborhood for a reason. There's a reason you're there. And now more than ever, since you're in the home more often, you are starting to recognize your neighbors probably more than you ever had. They're walking the street. People are walking the street. Now is our time to join Jesus on mission in our neighborhoods. And we do that by praying, walking. That's our first step. Well, our first reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. So grab your Bibles, because we'll turn there now. This is the reading of the Great Commission. This is the purpose of the church. This is why we exist, is to fulfill this command of Jesus. So join me as we read this passage. After the 11 disciples left Galilee going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some of them doubted. Now, pause real quick. I'll put a little context around this verse. Um, This is after Jesus died, resurrected from the dead, and he was visiting the disciples, and he said, meet us in this spot. And there he came. They saw him. They worshiped him because he had risen from the dead. And then what? Some had doubted. Isn't that, isn't that amazing, that little line? Scripture is so honest. And it's so honest because Christians, people who follow Jesus, are everyday, ordinary people who still doubt. That's what the disciples are. And so if you're, if you're a human, if you've got doubts, welcome to the church because we are all humans trying to figure this out, trying to follow Jesus as best as we can. Okay, picking it up at verse 18. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He gives us this command. Therefore, go and make disciples of just a couple of your friends or a couple nations that are nations that you like to travel in. No, it's all nations. They're, that word all re- literally means all. Okay, <laughs> It's not pick and choose. The gospel is for all people, all languages, and all nations. We come under the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God is that. A beautiful picture of what humanity is to be. A place where all humans have the dignity and value of being loved. So go to the nations. Now, on, on a first reading of this, and you would, you would hear the word go as um, probably as we would understand it, go to a destination, like go to China. That's where, go and make disciples. This is what spurned this missionary movement in the church, which is go and make disciples of all nations. So you got Michael De La Rocha, who has heard that call and he's in Uganda, okay? Now that's a proper way of reading this, but there's also a nuanced way of reading this as well, where we learn that um, from the scholars, they say you can read this as, as you go. Now here's the nuance, okay? If you're going to a destination to preach the gospel, you're going to a nation. That's one thing. That's a directed mission. But if we read it as you go, or as you go about your business, as you go about your life, read it like this. As you go, therefore, as you go, Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If we think of it this way, we think of it as we go about our business, as we go about our lives in the normal everyday places God has put us, he wants us to be on mission for God. 
And it's funny because all my friends who are missionaries, once they get to the place they're going, what do they do? They get normal jobs. They live in normal neighborhoods. We often fantasize about the reality of them doing what they're doing, but the reality is they're fulfilling the Great Commission and as they go about living their normal lives, but they're doing their business, they're doing it for Christ's business. Their mission of how they move and how they live is for Jesus, is for Jesus. So, bringing this full circle, you live in a neighborhood. God has put you there for a reason. Your neighbor's there. God has your neighbors in that space too. As you go about living in your neighborhood, your mission is to join Jesus in making disciples of all nations. That is why you live in that neighborhood. The primary call of why you live in that neighborhood is God's put you there so that you can join him on ministry in your neighborhood. So that should change the way that we move about our neighborhoods. Instead of just taking a walk, wow, as you go about your walk, God might put people in your path that you need to pray for, that you need to stop and listen to, that you need to care about. Are you going about in your neighborhood with God's business in mind, or do you have yours in mind? I have a friend who's evangelist. He said to me once, he said, Trevor, You got to think about it like this. When you go to the grocery store, you go to represent Jesus. And while you're there, you might as well pick up some groceries. If you go to the dentist, go representing Jesus. And while you're there, you might as well get your root canal done. (laughs) You see what I'm saying? There's, There's a shift in mission that as you go places, you are attuned to what God is doing there. One of the greatest examples of this is the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, Parable of the Good Samaritan. We're going to turn there now. Starting at verses 25, we read, One day an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho. He was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, look at that, by chance, a priest came along. When he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along And when he saw the man, he felt compassion. Now pause here for a moment. Pause here for a moment. Um, Two things are popping in me right now. One is, I'm reminded of what Jonathan was teaching us a couple weeks ago when he said, right now, often with this racial tension going on, we have far too long kind of been that person who's walked by the issue and have been complicit in not helping that person. That, that hit me really strongly. So I'm reflecting on that today with you, reminding us that it is our duty as Christians not to walk on the other, walk on the other side past the pain, the wounds, and the hurts of our neighbors. Of our neighbors. Now check this out though. None of these three characters were going to help a wounded guy on the street. Were they? No. 
They just happened to be there, right? So you got these religious people who you would think would be close to God. Well, God is close to the brokenhearted. He says that throughout scripture. They come through and they walk on the other side, okay? As they were going about their lives, they turned a blind eye. They saw it, but it didn't register in their heart level. They saw it, but they didn't stop. They saw it, they weren't prayerful. They weren't engaged. If they were prayer walking, maybe this would have been a different story for them. The Samaritan is going about his business too. As he's going to do whatever he's doing, he stops. He stops. How often have we not stopped in our own neighborhoods? We cannot stop any longer. And now that our lives look a lot different and we're not as busy as we were, God is telling us you need to slow down and stop and listen and begin to build relationships with your neighbors. How can you love someone who you don't know? How can you pray for someone when you don't know their name? Are you stopping to listen, to hear as you go about your day? Are you looking for those holy interruptions? We don't like it. We like our own agenda, right? We like knowing where we're going to be, what we're going to be doing. Are you open to God's tapping you on the shoulder and say, hey, will you stop and just ask that person how they're doing? Ask your neighbor who God put in that holy interaction that you're in the same place in the same time, walking your dog or taking out your trash or whatever it is? Are you willing to be open to the kingdom of God moving? Let's finish this story, this great story. Jesus is the great storyteller. Picking it up at verse 34, the Samaritan goes over to him. The Samaritan soothes his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged him. Then he put the man on his donkey and took him in, took him to an ant, to an inn where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I will pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Yes, now, as you go, as you go about your business, would your primary eyes and ears be open to what God is doing around you? Now, there's a little book that I, I love. It's, it's a great little book. It's Joining Jesus on Mission, How to Be an Everyday Missionary by Greg Finke. In this book, there are these five missional practices that help guide us on how to join Jesus in our everyday, ordinary places that God has put us. I want to go through these with you and encourage you to practice these in your neighborhood, okay? So here's the first missional practice. And these missional practices are basically a way that we give ourselves to God so that he can use us for his mission and purpose, which is called prayer. When we begin to pray, we get to learn who God is. We get to learn what he's doing in the world. And guess what? We offer ourselves God, send me. Would you send me into my neighborhood? Would you send me into my streets? Would you send me into the places you've called me? And so these missional practices are about giving ourselves to him. Here's the first one. Give Jesus your eyes. The practice is seeking the kingdom. It's an intentional looking out for where Jesus is and what he's doing. So as you're prayer walking, as you're getting in your car, as you're getting into your office, 
you're praying, God, open my eyes to where you're moving. And often because God is close to problems and close to the brokenhearted, you can be looking, God, where is their injury? Where are their wounds? Where is their hardship here? Where are you calling me to just see it? The good Samaritan did that, right? He saw, but he had compassion in his heart because he saw with his eyes, kingdom eyes, okay? Practice seeing God. Number two, give Jesus your ears. This is about hearing from Jesus, okay? Two simple ways when the Holy Spirit nudges you, and we've all felt this. We're out, we're out there, and God says, you know that, that lady down the street? Go talk to her. And what do we do? <laughs> we become Jonah, and we go the opposite direction. Well, listen to Jesus and follow him. You are obedient to Christ. He is your Lord, so listen to him. The other way that we listen is by reading scripture because God wants us to hear his word that shapes us so that we can begin to work as Jesus calls us to. Number three, give Jesus your clothed, closed mouth. <laughs> the missional practice is talking with people. Now, why did I say closed mouth? What we need now is ears that are open to listen. If you're going to speak to your neighbors, how about this? Ask them questions. I've got all these neighbors in my apartment. Yesterday, I was sitting there and one, one of them came by and I just listened and I sat there. He's Native American. This racial stuff is really weighing on him because he's feeling the pressure of this. And I just sat there for 15, 20 minutes and just asked him how he's doing. It's the work reconciliation is a work of listening and seeking understanding seeking understanding okay number four give Jesus your hands this is about doing good once you've spent time seeing where God's moving once you're listening to to what Jesus is telling you once you've Listen to the, the needs of your neighbor. Well, now it's time for you to offer yourself to do good to them. To offer yourself to do those little acts of service that bring about the kingdom of God. The fifth one is this. Give Jesus your heart. Minister through prayer. Minister through prayer. That's what we're going to, going to be practicing this Wednesday is a walking our neighborhoods and praying for our neighbors, ministering through prayer. My neighbor, Doña Tina, she struggles with depression. So it was my honor, probably about two weeks ago, she was having a rough day, she told me about it, and I got to pray with her right there in my neighborhood. That was a gift to me. As Steph and I moved, you know, we're from Maryland originally. When we moved to California, we had these practices in mind. When we moved, we were praying, God, wherever we go, wherever you put us, can we join in that mission there? So when we got our apartment, we were seeking, we were, we were, we were, we were asking ourselves as a couple, where is God moving in our neighborhood? We're constantly, and we would share these little stories like, oh, I, I think I saw God there or and we were starting to get to know our neighbors and we we're asking ourselves where is Jesus moving and we were listening to what God was saying to us in our neighborhood and so we met these uh, two widows wonderful Latina uh, great people they're right next to us and as we got to know them as we got to see them God said invite them over for dinner now this is before COVID-19 obviously and so we invited them over for dinner and we did a lot of listening. We said, hey, what's your story? Tell us of what your life has been like. Really beautiful moment. At the end of that, they both said, we've lived here for upwards of 36 years and no one's ever invited us over to have dinner. And I just said, wow, how can we, how can we, how can our neighborhoods be places of community if we never sit down together and eat together? 
one of the things that my kids love to do is they love writing little notes. And so we've been doing that little act of service of writing our neighbors little notes, just saying, how you doing? And we're learning their birthdays, so we're giving them little birthday things. And we've been ministering to them in prayer. When I thought, this is how it always works, right? If you've ever been on a missionary trip, if you've ever done God's work, you begin thinking that you're going to help all these other people, right? That's how it works. <laughs> and so Steph and I thinking that we're going to move in here. We're going to bless these people. It's going to be awesome. And there was one day when I was really down. It was, I was empty. I was um, just, there was a lot of things going on at church, a lot of families that were in deep need. And I felt like I had nothing left to give. So here I am, I'm like waking up, get ready. Uh, I'm, I'm walking to my car. And as I'm walking to my car, I hear a little tapping on, on this window next to uh, where we live. And it's this little woman, Donya Tina. Um, and so I, in my mind, I was like, no, you got a lot of stuff to do today. You just need to keep going, you know. But that little thing on, on the whole, I don't always listen to it. I'm still working on it said, stop. So, okay, I'll stop. So <laughs> I stopped. She opened her little door, or her little window, excuse me. And she said, I feel like God wanted me to give you this blessing today. And she literally just reached out of her window with her little old shaky finger. <laughs> and she just said, Trevor, may Jesus bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And she wrote that, just the cross on my forehead. And that moment, I felt like God touched me in the spot that I needed it that day. And when I got in my car and when I drove away, I, I recognized God put me in this neighborhood, not just for my neighbors, but so my neighbors could bless me. And if I would have missed that, I would have missed the blessing. So, I want to call you this week. I want to send you out this week on Wednesday. Sign up so that you have a little accountability as to what time you're going to be out there. Go and pray walk your neighborhood. Do these five practices. See what God is up to and join him there. That's my takeaway for you. Go and do that. I'm a part of this little team of missionaries who go, who've decided to go into LA to move into under-resourced neighborhoods to do mission work there. They really encourage me. With that team, they've put together five different videos to encourage us this week in loving our neighbors. On Facebook and YouTube, we're gonna put those videos up every day so that you have a little something, a little encouragement to keep joining Jesus and loving your neighbors. Finally, the third takeaway is that prayer walk food drive that Daniel's doing. We're going to be taking little paper bags, putting them on the doorsteps of all the, the neighbors here. And as we're doing it, we're going to be praying over that, that, those spaces so that they can take that bag and fill it with food if they are able to. But we're going to be prayer walking our neighborhood around the church. So I hope you can sign up for that as well. Well, I hope you hear the call of Jesus to love your neighbors as you love yourself. Let us pray. Almighty God, it's no accident that we, our church right now, is in places where I could never get to. I could never walk the streets like you have given these brothers and sisters the ability to walk the streets. And so God bless them, send them to, to the ministry you have for them in their neighborhoods. Give them eyes to see what you are about there. Give them ears to hear from you. Give them a mouth that is ready to listen and then speak questions or words of life to their neighbors. God, give them hands that are quick to do good for those around them. 
And God, give them a heart that is willing to offer prayers for those in their lives. We pray this, Jesus, in the name of the most high Jesus, your name. And all God's people said, amen. You know, one of the things that is on my heart uh, is that it's impossible to do this, do the things that Trevor was talking about under our own strength. You know, it's, it's impossible to view people through the eyes of Jesus under our own strength. It's impossible to, to be aware of what God is doing under our own strength. It requires being connected to the heart of God. And so during this time of worship, I just want to invite you to seek the presence of God as you worship. Just let him speak to you. Let him pour himself out so that when we walk through our neighbors, as we go throughout our lives, we'll go from that place of worship. We'll go from that place of connection to God. So let's just sing the song together, declaring the truth that our God is a good father and that he loves not only us, but our neighborhoods as well. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think they're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love.
again one more time, just voices. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Yes, God, that's who you are. It is who we are in you. As we pray over our neighbors, pray over our neighborhoods this week, let's just listen to this prayer by Jerry and Kathy Heffernan, one of our members. Just receive that the prayer that they have in this moment. Please join us as we pray for our neighborhoods. Heavenly Father, we ask your presence for families in our neighborhoods. We pray for strength and understanding between the marriages in the neighborhood. We ask for loving, strong bonds between children, teenagers, adults, and grandparents. And we just pray that each branch of the family would demonstrate love for one another. Heavenly King, we ask for your presence in the streets and homes in our community. We pray for local law enforcement, for their safety and wisdom and compassion in all circumstances. We pray for your comfort for those who have experienced violence, and we ask for your protection for all our neighbors. Lord, we ask for healthy, thriving relationships between neighbors. We just ask that the different cultures would just be able to understand and care for one another in our neighborhoods. We just pray that the diversity of your people will be celebrated by all neighbors. Father, we ask you to give our state and local leaders wisdom, to make the decisions affecting our neighborhood. We pray that they would be thoughtful in their decisions and listen to the voices of the community. We pray for courage to stand up for our community and to live with grace and dignity in our city. God, we also pray for teachers and um, the local principals who devote their days to taking care of our students. We just ask that you would be present as district and state leaders make impactful decisions. We ask for guidance and patience for the parent volunteers as they serve our neighborhood schools. We also ask that our schools will be a positive, safe community for our students. God, we ask for a flourishing community where neighbors learn to love each other and come to know Jesus. We pray that we could be good stewards of your love to each one of our neighbors. We ask that you help us to learn from our community and make it a place where all are welcomed. Lord, we pray for guidance for our local pastors as they nurture the congregations and seek to serve those around them. We ask that congregations would welcome neighbors with open arms, and we um, just hope that residents will find a place to experience community as they grow spiritually. We just ask all this in your holy and powerful name. Amen. Amen. Let's just play, pray this blessing over our neighbors, over our neighborhoods right now.
when Christ shall come We shout of acclamation and take me home What joy shall fill my heart Then I shall
God, you are so strong to save. You're God who's mighty in battle, and you're God who sends us out. So as we get sent forth into our neighborhoods today, just want to remind you that uh, you can give online uh, or send in uh, your offerings via the mail uh, as you go from here um, for the offering. And uh, I just want to leave us by singing uh, the words of this blessing one more time. Not just over our church, but over our neighborhoods. So let's just sing this, just the voices. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Yes, we declare that blessing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now go in peace and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God.